Hello and welcome to Simon's Rants. I'm Simon and today I'll be talking about why reboots suck. Now obviously I'm not talking about all reboots. The Dark Knight trilogy was a reboot series and that was awesome. But reboots are just genuinely actually harder to make than original movies sometimes. If the original movies that you're trying to reboot were actually good, then you have to make something that's similar enough that it captures the same kind of magic, but different enough that you don't just make the same movie all over again. For example, I'm going to talk about the Spider-Man movies. Now there aren't that many flaws actually with Spider-Man 1 and 2 of the original Spider-Man trilogy. So when they went to make a reboot of the original franchise with The Amazing Spider-Man, they were focusing on two things that they wanted to fix. The first one being Tobey Maguire's performance as Spider-Man, and the second one being the fact that he could actually shoot webs instead of having to make an invention for himself. Everything else about The Amazing Spider-Man that they changed from the original trilogy didn't actually have to be changed, and so it was just changed for the sake of being different. So we have Gwen Stacy instead of Mary Jane for no reason, and we have Uncle Ben with the same speech just worded a little different. Remember, with great power comes great responsibility. If you could do good things for other people, you had a moral obligation to do those things. Not choice, responsibility. Other than the two main changes, there was nothing worth changing. So they were just changing for the sake of it looking different, and it didn't really hold up. Then we come to Spider-Man Homecoming, which had five movies that it had to live up to. Five movies that it couldn't copy off of in any way, or people would point it out and say, you're just trying to be like those old movies. So how did Marvel choose to react to all of this that they had to live up to? They chose to do none of it. So instead of Uncle Ben being there to teach Spider-Man that with great power comes great responsibility, we have Iron Man there teaching him to... Take it slow or something. I don't honestly remember even what the whole point of that was. And instead of Mary Jane, we have some random girl that's there and then maybe another girl that's Mary Jane. We don't really know yet. It's kind of confusing, but her nickname's MJ. And instead of Flash Thompson being a big jock, he's a Indian nerd who's the dumb nerd. Granted, he's the alternate on the smart people team, but he's on the smart people team. <laughs> and if you thought that maybe Flash Thompson's newfound intellect would help him be a better bully, it doesn't. The worst thing that he ever did is call Peter Parker, Penis Parker. Oh no. So instead of Peter Parker starting as a jerk that only cares about himself and having to learn through the death of Uncle Ben that life is about bigger, more important things, the whole time he just wants to fight crime because... He wants to fight crime. We don't really know anything about him because they completely cut Uncle Ben out of it. They don't even mention his name. At no point do we get to know Peter Parker as an individual in this movie. We just know that he wants to fight crime for the sake of fighting crime and that he likes this girl and he's trying to impress her. And he only actually does anything stupid, really honestly, because his new friend who we know nothing about tells him to. By the way, his friend is pointless in this movie. He's just there to be different because Peter Parker was a loner in the other versions and now he's not in this one. He's a loner with friends, aka not a loner. And so many people after this movie was released were like, finally, we get the Spider-Man that we've deserved all along. In what way is this Spider-Man any more accurate to any interpretation ever? He's nothing at all like the comic book version of Peter Parker. The original Spider-Man, he was a jerk who had to learn lessons through tough things that happened in his life and that's how he became a hero. This kid just wants to do good because he wants to do good. He has no reason, he has no motivation because you cut out his motivation from the movie because you didn't want to be like the previous movies. That's like having Batman and cutting out the fact that his parents died. You're just like, why is there a guy dressed as the Bat? He can say as much as he wants that he wants to defend justice and be the dark vigilante, but you'd still be going, why? Why are you dressed as a bat? Are you crazy? And it's the same thing in this Spider-Man universe. There's no reason for him to do anything that he's doing. He's just doing it. And because we've had five movies, we just fill in the blanks in our own heads, but it doesn't give us anything. That's why the reboots of Batman worked. It was eight years. They weren't afraid to do an origin story all over again. Reboots need time because if you're going to retell the story, you can't rush into it and leave out important parts because you're afraid that people are going to get tired of the same old thing again. If you're going to remake something so quickly that you're tiring out the audience with the repetitivity of it, then don't make it. Make something different if you're going to do that. Don't try to remake the same thing but have nothing in it be the same. Wait eight years. Wait a decade. We don't need more Spider-Man right now. You're just ruining the character by taking away everything that made him who he is. If you're not going to have a with great power comes great responsibility speech in there, then we don't need it. 
If at the end of the movie, I still don't know why you're Spider-Man, then it's not a good character development movie. I should know why he wants to be a superhero other than, I just want to do the right thing. That's not a good reason. Nobody goes, I just want to do the right thing. So every day they wake up and beat up criminals. So just take a break. Take 10 years, take it 8 years at least, and make Spider-Man right later. Sure, a lot of people think that Spider-Man Homecoming is the best one right now, but in 10 years, everyone will realize that Spider-Man 1 and 2 were way better. Why? Because we had character development. We understood Peter Parker. We understood why he was Spider-Man. We understood why he was doing what he was doing and we related to it. We understood his struggle, his pull back and forth between wanting to do what was right and caring about himself. Nobody in the world knows why Spider-Man and Spider-Man Homecoming was doing the right thing. Not even him. He was just, I want to do what's right. Because it's right. And Iron Man went, hold on, don't do that yet. Stay home. Why? 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 I've had it! I'm done! I'm done. I'm Simon from Simon's Rants, and that was my rant for today.